Hello and welcome back to our second screencast on meeting the needs of each student during small group instruction. Although I provide special education services and intervention services in a small group setting, the activity I'm going to share with you today can easily be modified to use in a large classroom where one-to-one -one devices are available or virtual teaching is occurring. As I shared with you in the first screencast, I often break my groups into even smaller groups for the time that I'm with them. However, today I'll be sharing a whole group lesson with four of the students I support. Identifying the main idea is a skill that is introduced in kindergarten and travels through every grade level of the college and career ready standards. Learning how to identify the main ideas helps students remember what they read and improves their comprehension, which is often a huge challenge for this group of fourth grade students. These students have been working on determining the main idea of a text and explaining how it's supported by key details. This will continue to be the focus area for our session too. During weekly PLC meetings, I'm able to discuss with general education teachers what stories they will be reading in class. I can then plan my lesson to support this standard and skill in my session using the same text or similar. My students love when I read aloud to them, so I start off the lesson by reading a section of animal adaptions that they read the day before in class. I remind the students of the ice cream cone they learned about and how today we're going to be finding the main idea, or cone, and two scoops of ice cream that are supporting details. After I finish the story, I use a free tool called MindMeister and project it on my whiteboard. To get to MindMeister, go to www.mindmeister.com. The blue part is where I will enter the main idea by typing in the box. I ask for volunteers to share out what they think the main idea is. If we are doing remote teaching, I have students type in chat to share. Then, I'll go back to the text and find two key details that support the main idea. I stress the importance of always going back to the text to find evidence to support the main idea. I model how to go back to the text to find the supporting details. I encourage the students to highlight the text too. Then, I show them how to use MindMeister to record the two key details by typing in their responses. After we complete the map together, I explain that they're going to try it on their own. Prior to the lesson, I differentiate the next step based on their Lexile level. The directions will be the same for all students. Read the short paragraph, then complete your own MindMeister to identify the main idea and two key details to support the main idea using text evidence. This part of the lesson can easily be modified based on your classroom. You can have your students work in pairs or in larger groups. If you do not have access to technology, you can have the paragraph printed out and a map drawn on paper. If you are doing larger groups, your map could be placed on chart paper. I also include a third step in the Google Doc. Students are to email me how they are feeling about the skill of identifying the main idea in key detail. I also like to throw in a random question that will help me get to know my students better on a more personal level. After the end of the day, I really look forward to reading the emails. It also gives them practice with writing as I require complete sentences and no text lingo. This is what Rayanne sees when she opens up her Google Doc. I have her name in purple as that's her favorite color. Then she has a short paragraph that she'll read and the link to the MindMeister. Since I created the MindMeister, I can later go back and view what each student has completed. I provide them with feedback when I respond to their email. Thank you for viewing this screencast. I hope you have found it helpful in meeting the needs of every student. Happy teaching!